I'm shooting a feature length film. I am using very minimal equipment to shoot this feature length film. Um, at one time, I owned a Sony A6400 a while ago. I'm telling you I owned every APS-C lens imaginable for that camera. It's actually the camera that I learned how to use a proper camera on. I had every Sony lens, you know, all of them. 35mm f1.8, 50mm f1.8. I had the Sigma 16mm, the Sigma 30, the Sigma 56. I had the Tamron 17 to 70. I had the Samyang 12 millimeter F2. I had, I, I had everything, the 18 to 105. I had the uh, kit lens. I had, I had every lens you could think of. Third party lenses, everything. I found that I really enjoyed using the most my manual lenses that I found in my father's bag after he passed away. Minolta 28mm f2.8 and a Minolta 50mm f1.4, both vintage lenses, both all manual. I had to get adapters for them, NEX adapters for the E-mount. And then I started to you know, prepare for this film, and I, I knew that I needed something a little bit better than the A6400. I was looking for something that had better stabilization and better low light, low light capability. Although, I did find an incredible picture profile from that guy Josh from Make Art Now for a nighttime shooting that was incredible on the A6400, and I almost kept it just for that. But I wanted better stabilization because I was doing a lot of run and gun stuff. I don't really like shooting on a gimbal all the time. I just don't like the way it looks. For me, personally, I'm not saying anything bad about gimbals, and I, I have a gimbal. You know, I have a Weeble S. It's a great gimbal. It works fine. But I wound up getting a Panasonic S5, the original. The S5 II hadn't even come out yet. The 2X hadn't come out yet, obviously. I got the S5. I got it for a great deal. I got the Panasonic 50mm f1.8 as part of the deal. I got the kit lens, the 20 to 60 as part of the deal. I wound up selling both of those lenses because I found that my Minolta served me better. My manual lenses. Then I went and I got the Sigma 28-70 f2.8 because I wanted a decent zoom lens because I was shooting a documentary and I wanted, wanted to be prepared for anything and I wanted at least one autofocus lens and I actually find the autofocus on the S5 to be quite good. But to be honest with you, I find that I almost never use it. I use it sometimes, sometimes, but rarely. And I only use autofocus when I'm capturing the focus and then I put myself back into manual focus. Like I just lock down the focus sometimes, but rarely, because I'm generally using two lenses. I'm shooting a feature length film and I am 99% of the time using my Minolta 28mm f2.8, my Minolta 50mm f1.4. Those two lenses are getting me every shot that I need. I'm not doing bird photography. I'm not doing sports photography or videography or whatever. Like, I don't need that long reach. I don't need, you know, crazy real estate, uber, uber wide, although I like that look. And if I'm being honest, there were a couple of shots where I wished... I was, had something a little bit wider than the 28 millimeters, even though 28 is pretty wide on full frame. But I do miss my Samyang 12 millimeter because that was 18 millimeters equivalent full frame. I do wish I had an 18 millimeter. And there are a couple of lenses out there that I'm thinking of getting, a couple of manual lenses. And I also have two anamorphic lenses. I have the Siri 35 millimeter f1.8 and a 75 millimeter f1.8 and the next project that I shoot is going to be all anamorphic on those two lenses 35 and a 75 which is kind of equivalent to what I'm shooting with now because anamorphic is giving me a much wider field of view and so this 28 and 50 that I'm kind of used to that's the way I'm seeing the world is working for me I don't really feel want for anything else 
I'm not really interested in watching lens reviews anymore. I used to be obsessed. I don't even feel like watching, I don't find lenses interesting anymore unless we're talking about anamorphic now. Like I am interested in that because it's a completely different look. And it gives me the opportunity to do something different that I kind of see in my brain that I want to get to. And so that's why I'm shooting this next project, Anamorphic. But I'm no longer, I don't care about sharpness or any, like all, all lenses. As long as I can get something in focus, it's sharp. It's fine. Everybody's putting, you know, like filters over their lenses anyway. So what, who needs these G Master lenses? You know, who needs to spend three, four, five, unless you're working for a Sports Illustrator or ESPN or something like that, and you're shooting, you know, NBA or the NFL or something like that, of course, you need those crazy sharp lenses. If you're shooting commercials for Nike or something like that, where the client absolutely requires that kind of like X-ray machine, MRI kind of sharpness, okay, but if you're making a feature film or a documentary, you're not even wanting that kind of sharpness. I'm really happy with what I have. Panasonic S5, Minolta 28 millimeter, 50 millimeter, fast apertures. I can control the blurry background any way that I want. I can really be creative with it. I got plenty of light getting into the sensor. I have good ND filter. I got a decent microphone. I got good lavalier mics. I re always record to an external device. I'm using H1N, which is really cheap. And I, I kind of am interested in getting one of these uh, wireless mic setups. I might get the Holly Land because it's $299, it's cheaper, and I don't know if it would make that much of a difference for me to get, you know, like something that would cost me $100 more that allows me to, you know, record 32 float. I mean, like, I know how to set my audio levels. I don't really need to worry about that, you know? So I don't know, might be worth the extra $100 just to not have to think about it, but I'm just not really into AI and that whole thing. So I enjoy the process. I like being a part of it. I like getting the proper settings. I like thinking. <laughs> I know it's crazy. Call me wacky, but I like thinking. I like being a part of the creative process in the most meticulous way that I can, in the deepest level possible. I want to make the decisions. I'm all manual. And again, like I said, the autofocus on this camera is actually pretty good. So, yeah. It's interesting how I've had all those lenses. Had the A6400, I sold it. I don't work Sony anymore, I only have a Lumix. I would love to have a Sony FX3 or an FX6, something like that, I wouldn't mind. I actually love Sony cameras, but I'm really in love with Panasonic now. I might get an S1H to go with my S5, or I might get an S5 Mark II. But um, I don't know, like I don't really see why I would do that if I don't get involved with all, you know, autofocus lenses. Like my manual lenses, my vintage lenses are really closer to the look that I'm going for, and they get me there quicker than to have a modern lens. So I guess if I was shooting weddings and things like that, and if I was doing corporate work and I really needed like really reliable autofocus, then yeah, I would probably buy the whole set of Panasonic S-series lenses to go with my S5. And I would probably even upgrade to the Mark II to have more reliable, more flexible autofocus. But frankly, I'm really happy with what I have. So really excited about this project. This camera makes everything look so beautiful. Once I really learned my color management in DaVinci Resolve, it made a huge difference for me. So it's amazing. I mean, I was just completely obsessed with watching all of these filmmaking videos for years. And I still watch when I need to learn something. And now I'm watching a lot of stuff on color management because it's so complicated and I'm really trying to learn how to get the most out of DaVinci Resolve. Like, I don't really know how to do masking and stuff like that yet. I'm just kind of generally using what I get in camera. And then I just, you know, I'm really good at working with log footage, getting to getting it to look the way I want it to look. But to fix certain imperfections and things like that, I haven't really gotten a really firm grasp on that yet. But frankly, I haven't really needed it because, you know, if I get things correct in camera, I don't really need to worry about that, you know? Make sure that my white balance is correct. Make sure that my exposure is good. Make sure I have what I want. You know, if I need to, I overexpose a little bit so I could bring it down, keep the noise out. I, I like noise sometimes. I like the grain. 
So I'm happy with what I have. I'm really intent upon getting good audio all the time. And you know, honestly, I use a Purple Panda lavalier mic. It costs like 50 bucks. Recording to the H1M, which records 24-bit, 192 kilohertz audio, that's pro audio off the charts. Sounds great as long as I have it set up properly. I have the wind filter, so I don't have to worry about that. I have incredible live musicians that I'm working with to get the music together. I don't use any of those stock footage or stock music kind of sites. Nothing against them, but I just personally haven't used them. Um, yeah, that's where I'm at. That's where my gear thing is at. Um, I use my gimbal so infrequently. I have three uh, tripods. Two of them literally cost me less than $50. I have four tripods because I also have a small handheld tripod that I use a lot for stuff because I shoot a lot from the ground. So um, two of my tripods are really cheap. I have one tripod that cost me about 150 bucks. I like it a lot because it's uh, if I'm in more challenging circumstances or I don't want to risk hurting my camera, I'll use it. It's a little bit more heavy duty. Um, sorry, I got a little cold and my nose is just itching a little bit. Yeah, I got these little RGB lights. You know, this thing is this small. I mean, it's incredible. You know, it's really gets really, really bright. It's a, called a pixel RGB light. I love it a lot. I have a stick light you can see behind me. I have a tiny little RGB light that I have up here stuck in my um, lamp. I'm good with those lights because I use mostly natural light. Like I try to, you know, situate myself where natural light's coming into windows or I shoot a light outside and I try to get myself situated where it looks good. Um, but I'm learning a lot about lighting now and I'm gonna invest in more lighting because to me that's the magic is the lighting and the composition, you know. Um, so that's about all my stuff, you know. Um, I have, what else do I have? A ton of batteries. You definitely need a lot of batteries. A ton of SD cards. I got a lot of SD cards too. I got a lot of external hard drives, SSD drives, because you're always needing a lot of storage, especially if you're shooting in 4K or cinema 4K like I do. Um, you need a lot of storage. ND filters. Um, you know, blowers to keep everything clean, keep um, dust off my sensor and stuff like that. I'm looking around, you know, aside from my anamorphic lenses, just the lenses I told you about. I have some light stands, um, and I have my soul and my spirit and my heart and my eyes and my ears and my empathy, and I'm paying attention. I have my stories. That's the most important part. I'm trying to tell beautiful stories about difficult things so that we can, you know, elevate our ourselves into a higher place and grow our empathy and come together as a community. Like, that's really my intention with my work. And so I'm so excited about the gear that I have. I'm a tech nerd, you know, I'm using the Mac M2 right now. It's incredible. Um, I love it, but I don't, I don't really care. You know what I mean? Like, I could use this Lumix S5 forever. I could be very happy with a Sony camera or Fuji or Canon or whatever. All of these cameras are incredible. I could love to have an FX30, an FX3, an A7S3, S5, S1H, whatever. S5 Mark II, X-H2S, Fuji, you know, Canon R5-6, like they're all incredible. R5C, excuse me. I mean, yeah, I would like to have a camera that doesn't overheat, this one doesn't. Um, if I wanna shoot for more than 30 minutes, I set this to 8-bit, not a big deal or 1080, um, I can go 1080, 10 bit and shoot for more than 30 minutes. So I'm good with my gear. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm more excited about the stories. I'm more excited about writing scripts. I'm more excited about finishing and sharing with a whole bunch of people, whether it be a play or a film. I'm really, really more excited about getting work out into the universe and seeing what kind of contributions I can make and then starting new projects. and. Um, I am interested in anamorphic right now, so I want to learn more about that. I keep getting texts, you can hear that, right? So anyway, that's it. That's where I'm at. That's the gear that I have. Um, I have the gear list down below, and um, 
you know, I'm sure I'm going to continue to experiment with more gear. I do want to get some wireless mics because I'm tripping over my wires all the time with my lavalier and it's a pain in the ass to hide it all the time. And like, it's a waste of my time. So if I could spend $2.99 for the Hollyland, um, Hollyland wireless set setup or, you know, maybe I'll go an extra $3.99 and get, you know, get a better system. Um, I don't know if it's better, but it just, you know, it's a little bit more flexible. It comes with two lavalier mics. Notice I'm not mentioning the name because I'm not trying to like promote anybody or do anything like that. So um, yeah, I'm happy, I'm content, I'm excited. And uh, I'm just trying to make great art. I'm just trying to improve my craft all the time. I'm trying to work as hard as I possibly can to get the most out of my own potential. And that's it. All right, thanks. See you soon.